oh, smartphone manufacturers call portrait mode bokeh mode. Okay. Yeah. So that is basically it. Yeah. Bokeh mode. <laughs> cool. Bokeh mode. <laughs> Got a bokeh mode. Just... <laughs> Can you just it's get an episode of Pokemon and call it Pokemon and just blur the entire <laughs> thing? <laughs> or anytime a Pokemon gets sent out, they're just blurry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, people of the internet. Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. This joke is getting tired because I'm <laughs> actually David. Marquez is still in Australia. Uh, he's winning constantly. They're, as far as I know, they're undefeated. I think they've played... Japan's a really tough team. I don't think they've played some of the harder teams. I think Australia's going to be really tough. Mm. They're generally pretty good. Um, so I think they are probably getting into bracket play pretty soon. Okay. What um, is bracket play? Like the way it's gonna work is since it's a tournament, they'll do pool play where they basically seed all the teams. They throw the frisbee in the pool. They in the pool first person to get it. Okay, wins. Um, okay, so it's like water polo. No, they'll take like sixteen teams and split it up into groups of four, and those are pools. Those pools play against each other and then create the seeding for the elimination uh, bracket. Got it. So they're probably they're definitely in elimination bracket right now. Okay, um, I felt really stupid because Marquez has consistently been posting the match scores on his mm -hmm. Instagram stories. And every single time, they keep getting 15 points. So I messaged him, and I was like, why do you guys keep getting 15 points? And he was like, David, it's first to 15 points okay. wins. And I was like, oh. <laughs> As a former Ultimate player. Apparently, that's how it works. You are not stupid, because Ultimate is the most confusing okay. sport possible, because we cannot keep what we want to do. And it's not always just to 15. There's a weird time limit where if you don't make it, then it'll be like plus two or plus okay. one to that. So anyways, yeah. you're not dumb. He it's... tried to give me an analogy. He was like, just like in ping pong, how you play to 21, you play to 15 in ultimate. Fair. You know? I yeah. guess that's kind of similar. How many points is a touchdown worth in ultimate? One. <laughs> one. Every point is worth one in okay. ultimate. And it is called a touchdown. A point, a score. Yeah, a score. Okay, so it's not called a touchdown. No, it's okay. it's <laughs> called probably anything but a touchdown. Yeah, but, you should go look. But it is an end zone. Correct. There is an end zone. Yeah. All right. All right. I think we get. Okay. How? Where? When do I get a home run? <laughs> All right. Uh, and that's the end of trivia for today. <laughs> Today's episode, we have early pixel fold thoughts. Blue sky users surging. Yeah. We'll find out why. AI starting to already mess up Google search. And then I kind of want to talk about this new game called Deadlock that I'm obsessed I'm with. I'm super and I think down to talk to you about it. Yeah. You'll be interested in it. Yeah. Um, but first, last week, we didn't have time for this, but there was this Verge article about swappable prime lenses. Right. And I didn't know how to think about it. And I assumed you'd have some thoughts. I don't know if they're good or bad thoughts, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. David, on yeah. please teach us. Okay. <laughs> so the way a lens works is you have the internal part of the lens, which has all of these things called lens elements. Mm -hmm. And effectively, there's multiple elements of the lens that focus the light, because depending on the aperture, or the, the focal length of the lens and the type of lens that you make, you have to focus the light to make an image circle on the sensor, right? So Sam Yang has apparently come out with this singular lens that you keep mounted to your camera and you just swap out the lens elements instead of swapping out the f entire lens. The okay. point of this, they say, is to like save weight and now you can only you only have to bring like basically the center part of your lens with you instead okay. of the whole lens, which makes a lot of sense. Um I feel like based off what you just said, my initial thought was sounds cool. Wait, it feels like you're just swapping lenses anyways. But then like yeah. okay, the because the exterior part of it is the bulkier aspect. If you yeah. can just carry the small parts, that does sound nice. So, lenses, yeah. a lot of times, sorry, I interrupted, but yeah. like lenses when you're like walking or like bringing a bag, those are the things that add up in weight when you oh, want yeah. to bring multiple, especially when you're doing prime lenses. Oh, yeah. A bunch of them. Yeah. I brought a bunch of lenses with me to Glacier National Park this weekend, <laughs> and my back was in pain. Was <laughs> um, so it's an, it's an interesting idea. I think that. The awkward thing about it is it significantly limits the type of lens design that you can have. Okay. Because if you want, like, there's this legendary line of Nikon lenses called the Noct lenses mm -hmm. that are, like, 0.95 um, aperture. <sighs> okay. And they're huge. <laughs> they're, like, massive, massive. Canon also makes a 28 to 70 f2 or a 24 to 70 f2, one of the two. I think it's 28 to 70 f2. It's also massive. And the reason that is, is because you need a lot of glass to be able to focus that much light and okay. produce 
like that many stops of light on a lens. So having the body of the lens fixed really does like pretty significantly limit what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, However, they might be able to make the interior parts longer or shorter. So I don't know. It's interesting. I I think that you're kind of locking yourself into that ecosystem. For sure. But at the same time, at least initially, they're only offering three and they're not actually that different. There's a 21 millimeter, a 28 millimeter and a 32 millimeter, which again, um, you know, they're not super different in focal length. Yeah, it's like not enough to be like super excited about getting this and locking into that when yeah. if you want something tighter and you want to go up to like a 50, which feels like a significant jump or like, you know, a normal jump from 28 to 50, this doesn't even have it. So you're just bringing that lens. That's in. where you're starting to see the limitations of these okay. is that the longer focal lengths you get, generally you have to make the lens longer because you have to put more elements in yeah. because there has to be a longer distance between the focal center of the the optical center of the lens and the focal plane, which is the sensor. So anyway, my overall take on this is they're pretty affordable. Um, apparently, it's going to be around $229 for the main lens mount with the 32 millimeter insert. And I'm not sure what they're going to be shipping the other adapters for. Inserts for, yeah. Yeah. I also don't know about the quality. Um, they are 2.8, 3.5, and 3.5 respectively, which is like... Not the fastest, but for a walk around lens, I think the 21 millimeter 2.8 could be cool. I like 28 millimeters, but anyway, it's an interesting idea. I'm glad that people are innovating in the in the lens space in general. So, and it's kind of cool that you don't have to carry around these giant lenses. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, cool. I just All wanted right. your take on it. Now, sure. can you explain why <laughs> Blue Sky gained okay. two million users over the weekend? Is that like double their users? Yeah, I'm not sure but it is a lot. It's a significant Yeah, chunk. they gained, so for those that don't know, Blue Sky uh, is a alternative to Twitter, looks exactly like Twitter. And if you wanna learn more about Blue Sky, we just, this is actually very in, in, incredibly good timing, because <laughs> yeah. we just published a special episode about Blue Sky and Threads, uh, which you should go watch. It's called Protocol Wars, uh, AT Pro, or Blue Sky versus Threads, something like that. And Blue Sky is this alternative to Twitter that was sort of incubated inside of Twitter. But over the weekend, they gained a ton of users because Brazil has officially banned X slash Twitter. Yeah. I haven't gotten to read into this yet on why this is happening. Yeah. This happened pretty much exactly why you probably think it happened (laughs) in that uh, Elon got mad at some judge and then, you know, didn't comply with what they wanted him to do. And then he they banned it. (laughs) It says they they had... uh fees or fines that they had to pay yeah so effectively what happened is like way back in april this judge in brazil told x that it needed to suspend suspend certain accounts for spreading disinformation um elon said no we're not going to do that and then he also proceeded to mock the judge a lot which um works out really well for you generally yep uh and then X. It works out really well for you, James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then X closed its Brazilian office uh, in August because X said that its legal representative was threatened with arrest if she did not comply with uh, the rules that were set by this judge. And then the judge basically said, Google and Apple have five days to take X off the App Store and block use on their platforms. This ban is now effective until X names a new legal representative in Brazil, which they are probably not going to do. Okay. Uh, and they also now have to pay a bunch of fines that it that they owe to Brazil because of all of these infringements that they have made. Then it got worse, like it always does, uh, because Starlink said that they're not going to ban X on users that are using Starlink in Brazil. Which is a surprising amount of people. I saw somewhere it was like over 100,000 or 200,000 I wouldn't be surprised by that. Dude, you yeah. know what's crazy? Yeah. When I was in Glacier this weekend, they have no service at all. No, I remember that. And I was at a lot of, I went to a few of the different um, ranger stations because I locked my keys in my car and had to hitchhike about five miles. <laughs> you, hold on. I, I don't want to de- derail the pod that much, but when you came in this morning, I immediately was like, Glacier's beautiful, isn't it? You were telling me about these awesome hikes you did and everything. You yeah. skipped that part of the story oh, yeah. completely. Yeah. I don't know how modern cars allow this to happen anymore, but I, like, I, I closed my door in the, the microsecond my door closed. It's the worst feeling I had in the my, world. My, my stomach just exploded. <laughs> I saw my keys sitting on my seat and all the doors had just oh, auto-locked. No. Uh, anyway, the point is... I, I hitchhiked to a ranger station at the top of this mountain, 
and the ranger station had a had Starlink. Okay. Yeah. I can like places like that are where it makes the most sense, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. And I'm Brazil is gigantic. Right. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of rural places where it yeah. makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And for those that don't know, Brazil is actually has traditionally been very 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 active on Twitter. They make up like a lot of the fan and stan accounts that like really have uh social culture moving i know i mean this is a niche aspect of it but the brazilian valorant fans are wild really i mean like they support their their teams a lot yeah and there's a lot of people on twitter supporting those teams and when yeah. i used to watch valorant a lot brazil big yeah, they they have 215 million people and reportedly 10% of the entire country used Twitter. Okay. Wow. Which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um so Starlink said they weren't going to comply and then Brazil froze Starlink's bank accounts. Okay. So then they did comply. <laughs> um so anyway, regardless, it is pretty much indefinitely banned in Brazil, and so everyone decided to move over to Blue Sky. And I was looking into why they chose Blue Sky instead of Threads, and apparently mostly just people just didn't want to join another meta platform. Fair. Which totally makes sense. And also, Blue Sky, if you haven't used it, basically is formatted exactly like Twitter used to look mm -hmm. before it got switched over to X. <laughs> like, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same. So... Blue Sky over the weekend gained two million users, yeah. <laughs> which is uh, about ten percent of Brazil's population. Because ten percent would be two point five million. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is crazy. It said the significant growth brings platform's total user count to eight point four million. So, so that's twenty percent, twenty per plus percent right? over a weekend, which is nuts. That's crazy. Yeah, and Blue Sky is cool. Like, there's a lot of really interesting features of Blue Sky. There's custom feeds. There's like these starter packs that you can um, basically, like if your friends have a certain Bulbasaur? amount of people. Wait what, wait, what is a starter pack on a social media? <laughs> a like starter that? pack on Blue Sky is basically like, if you are a person who's into these categories or the people that I'm following, the accounts that I'm following, the feeds oh. that I am using, I can just copy that over to your account. So like if I mm -hmm. wanted to like look at pictures of moss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's different there's custom feeds on Blue Sky, so you can like you can go to the you know for you feed or whatever. But there's also a following feed. There's also custom feeds where people can curate oh. their own sort of lists, and then okay. you can have these lists as these custom feeds. There's custom moderation. Um, so yeah, I think that a lot of people just like wanted to move over there, and it's really funny because I was using Blue Sky a lot over the weekend, and like half the posts were in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> So, to all you Portu uh, Brazilian Blue Sky users out there, hello. Welcome. Yeah, you own Blue Sky now, I think. Pretty much. Yeah. It was definitely a huge jump for the platform, um, and it's good to have more users, because like we talked about on the special episode, the social graph problem is kind of the biggest problem, and so just getting more people on there, especially people that contribute so much to culture, Yeah. I think is very important. So, it might make people actually want to go over and download it. Funny right. enough, I got a lot of people posting at me, skying at, well, skying at me, I guess. <laughs> I forgot about Yeah, that. don't, I can't say that on the podcast, but uh, <laughs> saying that they downloaded Blue Sky because of the episode, which oh. is very funny because most of it was about Activity Pub. Yeah, like, and most of us were saying, like, wow, it feels like Activity Pub and Threads is really doing way better than yeah, Blue Sky. Yeah, but hey, hmm. a lot of people seem to be interested in it. So that's fun. Uh, so if you want to check out Blue Sky, Go hang out with all the Brazilians. Sweet. Yeah. All right. I have one more quick thing before we do trivia. Mm -hmm. And it's just because I want to talk about MySpace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but Instagram is now allowing you to add a song to your Instagram profile, just like MySpace used to be. Yeah. Amazing. But Hell this yeah. time it doesn't it doesn't autoplay on your It profile. doesn't autoplay, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> I do wish they brought in top eight so we could all mm. argue with our friends all the time. Is that like your top eight friends? Yeah. So MySpace used to have a thing where on your page it had your profile picture, it had like a bio, it had the song that would play, and then it would have you curated the eight friends <laughs> that would show on the top and the amount of That's awful. fights <laughs> and arguments that the that drama. started. It the was drama. So juicy. I was peak. I would just not put anyone. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> I couldn't just make it. eight of your own accounts and make yeah. all of them so it didn't populate that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
I mostly wanted to play this because I want everyone to say what song they would add to their Instagram profile. What song I would add? Because there's already a song that I added. Okay, what song did you add? What song did you add? Uh, Cruisin' by Childish Gambino off the new album because it's awesome and I can't get it out of my head. There's a new album? Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. I thought he was getting rid of the Childish Gambino name. No, no, this This was his last album. Oh, okay. Ellis, what about you? Uh, I was just thinking about it. Um, I think I'd have to go with this song. But that's just me. I hmm. I like it. What what is else? it? Man, I wish it would autoplay. Can we put that on the podcast? Yeah, we oh. could also put this on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see him stop me. I would love <laughs> lo- looking at Ellis's pictures to that music. <laughs> oh, oh, I was <laughs> like... Did you think I was talking about? I was about? like, you can't yeah. see that. <laughs> you know, I hate autoplay videos, but honestly, I would be kind of down for this autoplay music. I would be down. Yeah. And how does it, so how does it work? Is it okay, a so Spotify link? I'll show you through mine. Okay. No, so I believe, I was trying to figure this out. Meta has their own library through yeah. some different, uh, probably for like reels and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. And so you just have to find something in there. It's already, oh. it's a library you just search through when you go and add a song. It's in like edit profile song choice. Interesting. Um, and then you pick through that and then it just comes up as, which I don't think people are going to really see, but there's just this little play icon underneath it. So yeah. this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, see, oh, pepper my staff and a can in my hand. Only Dr. I trust is the pepper man. Wow. I love that can you can someone play please it. explain that for the audience. <laughs> There's a Dr. Pepper AI song that's actually really, really good. The chorus is Song of the Summer. Easy. Oh, dude. I, yeah. You know, I their article came out a few week or two ago that AI has had zero economic impact <laughs> since. They, that song is proof that it is fantastic. Yeah. The the cultural impact, let alone the economic impact of the Dr Pepper song. Is, yeah. So mm-hmm. seeing the way that it works on Android Android's phone, Andrew's phone, uh-huh. I like that you can just play it directly from the profile and it doesn't have to like open up a separate link. Or yeah, app agreed. Or something that is very cool. It is super small to the point where hitting the play button is actually kind of hard. Oh, really? Like, I've missed the play button multiple times. They probably times. did that on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, you have to really want to listen to the song. <sighs> yeah. I feel like there could be a middle ground. Yeah. I also think you should be able to name it something. Like, <laughs> mine says, asking AI to make a hit country song about Dr. Pepper. Like, that's too long. Oh. I just want it to be like, Andrew's favorite song or like let me name it something or let me name it song of the summer and people were like I wonder what that is and it would be nice it. if it was mysterious yeah yeah people would want to click it then my theory is that they're trying to make Instagram into more of a dating app <laughs> that's a good theory yeah. to be fair to they did launch this in collaboration with Sabrina Carpenter and a new song so like I think that was kind of mm. the the way they marketed this as adding it onto it. there um but yeah, I think it's a 30 second portion it clips out of, but you still need to oh, name it. It's not yours. the whole song. No, no. It's not the whole song. mine is Semi Charm Life by Third Eye Blind. Which. What? No way. Does no it way. Start? I would never get it. Wait, wait, wait. But does it start straight at do, 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 or are you into the chorus already? I think it's, it's only 30 it's seconds. It's got to start at the beginning. Or do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because that's important. It's just that <laughs> replaying for 30 seconds. It's just do, do, do. Unfortunately, on most streamers, when you play that song, the. Uh, radio station that plays afterwards is bangersonly.net. So it's a bummer that there isn't an auto radio that plays immediately Fair. after you play it. But I do need people to know more about this song, which I actually watched a documentary about the song last night. Do you need more people to know about that song? I feel like that is, if you lived at any millisecond Period. in if the you 90s, lived, dude, you've heard that song. I just want to take, take a second to talk about a little bit of Third Eye Blind trivia. Okay. Okay. Did you know? Okay, so there is a there is this ranch that Ellis will know a lot about called Skywalker Ranch in California. Basically, George Lucas right. <laughs> created this ranch for like just doing insane like video effects and sound design. Mm-hmm. And I've been invited to a few screenings at Skywalker Ranch because they screened some movies there, mm-hmm. specifically the new Star Wars movies when they came out. They invited me to go see them there. Apparently, Third Eye Blind had like no money, right? Because they were just a local band in San Francisco. They knew about Skywalker Ranch. They knew it was insanely expensive and they didn't think that that many people rented it out. Mm -hmm. So one day they just showed up and set up 
and started recording their album. And they recorded like most of the album over 10 days at Skywalker Ranch without asking anyone permission and then left. <laughs> that's us. <laughs> and like that's how they recorded their debut, a lot Which of their debut album. is So like the studios there are called uh, Skywalker Sound mm-hmm. and it's a huge deal in the audio world. And just to, like the, the trivia fact that everyone loves to cite is that every year since 1977, a sound guy or remixer or like some audio person has either been nominated or won an academy award every year since 1977 wow. it's like it's like ludicrous the work they do there hmm. yeah we should record the podcast there yeah that we should would be record cool. waveform there. we should just show up and record a waveform there and then leave <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure they've tightened down security since well then. yeah apparently uh after the album came out and got really big they went back and like told the person at the front desk that they did it and the person was like yeah i mean i don't know as long as you record your next album here then all is forgiven i guess <laughs> oh, that's awesome <laughs> which is cool so anyway so yeah that's the new instagram feature cool Tell us what your song of the summer or song of your Instagram is going to be in the comments. I just want them to let us edit the HTML of the Instagram page, just like we used to do with MySpace. Dude, (laughs) when I was chaos, when I was in sixth grade, I I coded my own website in sixth grade because it was part of like this class I was taking, and it was basically just taking random cat images from the internet and like making them the wallpaper, and then playing Weird Al Yankovic in the background, like over and over again, the same song. Does this still exist? The song Hardware Store by Weird Al Yankovic. I feel like that's like a project you can currently have. I highly doubt it exists. (laughs) Was it ever like hosted on an actual DNS server? Yeah. So do you think it was archived? (laughs) Possibly. (laughs) I don't remember the name of the URL though, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. Next waveform, long form. Yeah. (laughs) Finding Finding my old website (laughs) from sixth grade. (laughs) Anyway. All right. Well... I think we should take it to some non third eye blind trivia. Oh, and the lights work today. Marquez will never believe it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. Well, this week we have an audio question. Uh-oh. Not a question about audio, but a question <laughs> where I'm going to play you audio. Okay. And specifically, earlier this week, Ars Technica reported a story about this sound coming from a place it was not supposed to come from. Where did that sound come from? Are we allowed to know what that sound is? Uh, they don't know what they it is. They don't know what it is. <laughs> they they know probably why it happened, but no one, I have not seen it reported like conclusively. Okay. That's what the sound is. I saw a different article recently about sound coming from something that wasn't supposed to be it. Was but it I don't want sound? S- <laughs> no. Oh, I thought you were going to play another one. I don't want to say what it was in case that's also what this is. Oh. Hmm. But I'll tell the story later tricky well we'll have to find out at the end when we give the answers and the scores and the points but until then bye no we'll be right back all right Support for Waveform comes from Life360. It's back to school season, which means it's time for new routines, new activities, and maybe new responsibilities for your kids. Maybe they're getting themselves to school or carpooling to and from practice. It's exciting stuff, but you still want to make sure they're staying safe. You might want to try Life360, a family connection and safety app that makes it easy to keep track of your family members' locations in real time. Life360 place alert notifications let you know when your kids arrive or leave a location, like school, practice, a friend's house, or even the bus stop. And with a tile from Life360, you can easily attach and track items like backpacks, duffel bags, and even a pet's collar. I lost so many lunch boxes as a kid. All to help alleviate the mental load of managing a busy family. Like I mentioned earlier, lunch boxes and jackets were just coming in and going out when I was a kid. Could not keep track of them, drove my mother insane if I had had a tile tile by Life360, all would have been better. So coordinate the chaos of back to school season with Life360. Visit life360.com or download the app today and use code WAVE, W-A-V-E, to get one month of the gold package for free, plus 15% off all tiles. 
That's life360.com code WAVE. Support for Waveform comes from AT&T. Here's a little secret. Most smartphone deals aren't that exciting. To be honest, they're barely worth mentioning. But then there's the best deals you can find at AT&T. Now those are exciting. They're the kind of deals that are worth talking about, like their deal on the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6 featuring flex cam with Galaxy AI. Now sure, I could just say it's an amazing deal and hope you believe me, but with this one, it's worth sharing the details. You can trade in your eligible smartphone for a new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6. That's it. Simple. Any year, any condition, a deal this good will have you shouting from the rooftops. Or at the very least, calling your friends from your new phone to tell them about it. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Requires trading of Galaxy S, Note, or Z Series smartphone. Limited time offer. 256 gigabytes for $0. Terms and restrictions apply. See AT.com slash Samsung or visit an ATT store for details. Welcome back. As you may have seen on Monday, the Pixel Fold 9 Pro Fold embargo lifted. So now we can finally talk about it. We can. Marquez unfortunately left like one day too early to actually get his Fold. Yeah, it's so sitting he, on his desk right now. Yeah. So the review of that might not come out till like after the iPhone, at least the hands on of the iPhone. We'll figure it out. But lucky for you guys, I've been using this thing basically since a week ago. So I have some thoughts. Right. I do. It, it is a bummer that they sent these out really late. Um, I was talking to Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, over the weekend, and he got his even later. I think he got his like Thursday or Friday, and the embargo was Monday. Yeah. To be fair, this morning Tuesday. we were to Tuesday. Sorry, yesterday. Oh, people are getting it yesterday. No, or the, no, the, the embargo, embargo came was out. Tuesday yeah, yeah. because Monday was a holiday. Because this morning, Adam and I, before you got in, we're like, can we talk about this on the pod? Yeah. Let's see if there's any. Where's the embargo? And looked, and there's like a Tom's Guide video and like one other channel and like maybe a Verge review. There were There's not a lot of content. There's not a lot of content it. about it because, and Google always does this. Google is the worst with this. They always, they generally make embargoes on Mondays and give you the product on Friday. So you basically have to like rush a review over a weekend, which sucks. This time they gave us the, the devices on Wednesday or Thursday and made the embargo on Tuesday, the day after a holiday weekend. Yeah. <laughs> which is like, guys, please. People have lives. Um, yeah, so I've had it for a while. It is, in my opinion, one of the best foldable phones out right now. It's kind of like a OnePlus Open, but Google and Pixely, mm -hmm. which is really awesome. The interior screen has been significantly improved. Uh, it's very good. It's very, very thin. The battery life has been really good. It looks very thin. Yeah, it's really thin. The battery life is really good. The one thing I've been not that happy about is the cameras. Uh, they okay. definitely have... A way too much contrast, even like quite a bit worse than the Pixel 9 Pro and the Pixel 9. Can I see something? Yeah. You have a two hour timer running right now? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, my car is charging. Oh, charging. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was like, D is that just running randomly? No. Okay. No. Um, but I used it throughout the entire time at Glacier. It was very useful to have like split apps open. The kind of cool thing about the aspect ratio is it's effectively the exact same aspect ratio as two phones next to each other. Okay. So when you use it in multi-app mode, it can be really useful if you find that useful. If you're like, I want to watch a YouTube video and use Telegram at the same time, then, you know, mm. then that's useful. I still would really like to see a foldable that folds out into a like 16 by 9 as or 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which I guess the flip does. Yeah. But then you have to like use the square aspect ratio on the front instead. Mm -hmm. Very hard. It's kind of hard to find really super useful use cases of the interior screen because watching videos chops off like, you know, half, yeah, that's half just of the screen is just not being video. used. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But for this format of foldable, I think it's my favorite one that I've used so far, mostly because it has all the Pixel software. Can I say something right off the bat? I haven't even held this yet. Yeah. But you just mentioned how it's exactly the size of two phones. Yeah. And we mentioned this, a different one, when we were just talking about how they looked. Mm -hmm. This whole, like, the uh, hinge having this extra, yeah. it's not bezel, but it almost looks like a phone inside of a case. Yeah. This reminds me so much of the LG Velvet case yeah, yeah. that just added another screen or to the it. V60. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't like that. I think that looks terrible. It looks weird. It looks like two phones are slotted into a hinge. It does look like that. And I think that is kind of strange. It is strange. But I've been dealing with it. 
But yeah, I mean, it is really thin. Overall, this it's, feels really it's nice. quite good. I think I really wish that they would add some of the features that the OnePlus Open has, like being able to sort of put apps outside of the main screen and then slide them in whenever you want to mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but having all the pixel features like now playing and like Whoa. call recording and all of that kind of stuff. Does it have like a useful. dock? A dock? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does have the dock because that's built into Android now. I like how the oh. app screen, the app drawer is split screen as well oh, well it's just, it just doesn't take up the whole, up the whole spot yeah i think that's kind of awesome because that's a lot of icons to go across if you're yeah the interior hmm. screen is really good it has a fingerprint reader on the power button which is nice um i like using that uh over it also has face unlock though so that that can work Wait, as well this power button has a fingerprint reader on it yeah it's built in yeah i mean it's not gonna work for you yeah phone. i know but usually they're not uh extruded like that if it has a fingerprint reader on it which yeah. is kind of wild yeah pretty good okay no this feels fantastic this feels like a phone in a case in terms of thickness like i think that is one of the most usable Mm -hmm. folds that i've held i think for a gen 2 it's surprisingly good for sure the gen 1 the the camera bump is terrible still the camera bump is really weird (laughs) it's definitely really weird the gen 1 i really liked because of the size because it was shorter and i thought that was nice Mm -hmm. and i personally would have preferred if they just expanded on that and made the interior screen better but overall, I think for this size of foldable, it's like one of the best foldables you can get, especially in the U.S. So, yeah, it's can expensive we, again still. But I think Adam probably wants to gush over it a yeah, little bit. Adam, I've been could, waiting. Do you have questions? This whole time I have so... Well, no, you answered my one main question. Okay. But for the sake of the pod, I'll reiterate them. Okay. So, you had it now for a week going on a trip to Glacier, mm-hmm. arguably one of the most beautiful places in the world. Mm-hmm. So... Correct. How do you feel about the picture quality? Because I really look for good quality pictures in my next phone. Yeah, the camera is not super good. Yeah, unfortunately. So have you tried yeah. taking pictures with like RAW as well? Uh, yes. And I have not you, tried to edit the I was RAW say, photos yet. Into like Lightroom but the video is not amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the photos that just come out, the JPEGs that just come out, are not definitely not as good as the Pixel Nine Pro. Yeah, I was seeing like people yeah. post pictures over the weekend and it's they're very contrasty there yeah it looks like it takes the pixel processing and it like jacks it up to the next level Mm -hmm. it's not it's not great do you know if there's a way to like tone that down a bit i mean you can shoot in raw that's it right? that's basically it or you can like tap on a shadow area to try to get a little more dynamic range to make it less contrasty it's still gonna be a little sharp and contrasty around the edges but shout out to Zero Cam. There's this uh, app called Zero Cam on iOS that basically does like very minimal slash no processing, mm-hmm. which really gets rid of like the phone look. By the makers of Halide Cam, right? No, Hal- Halide doing their own. is also oh, doing a version they call Process Zero, which I just <laughs> want to point zeros. out. I just want to point out, I made this video essay three years ago <laughs> that's exactly this, and I told everyone to do this, and now it's happening. Thank God. The companies aren't doing it, though. It's all third parties. Yeah. But those are really cool apps because they basically make your f- smartphone camera look like a digicam. Like, the quality is way better. There's way less sharpening and all that stuff. There can be more noise if it's super low light because it's not doing, it's not really doing computational yeah. photography. But uh, I definitely recommend checking out Zero Cam and or Process Zero on Halide. Are those both iOS, though? They're both iOS only, but uh, Zero Cam is is officially porting to Android right now. Okay, cool. So it will be available on Android pretty soon, which is really cool. Nice. Yeah. Uh, next question. Yes. How's the durability of it? Like So far, pretty good. Mm-hmm. I was not super careful with this, and I had my iPhone in my pocket at the same time. So both the phones were sort of rubbing together all the time, and I definitely have some like very minor scuffs on the screen, okay. and there's one scratch that is actually in the screen. But besides that... Considering I was like bringing it all around Glacier and like hiking, you know, mm-hmm. twenty miles a day with it, yeah, it's held up pretty well so far. Nice. I, again, it's only been a week, mm-hmm. but uh, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, but Be- like it's a week of like one of the most intense activities that I'll probably do right. in my life. So like right. that is the the bar. Yeah. Uh, next question. Mm-hmm. You all you just finished using the Pixel Nine Pro. Nine Pro. Thank you. Yeah. With the under display fingerprint reader. Uh-huh. Now you're using the power button fingerprint reader. Yeah. Is it just as quick? Is it snappy? Do you feel a little different? Uh, it's pretty much just as quick. There's okay. also face unlock. Yeah. And you can use them in conjunction with each other. So both together, it's like you really don't notice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As someone who used the fingerprint reader on the Zen phone, which yeah. is on the side, 
actually grew really frustrated with a while because when it's sitting on your desk, if you just want to like unlock it really quick, oh yeah, it is a pain in the ass to. Mm. Yeah. When have like you, it's front screen, it's really easy. But David, that's like super minimal. I don't like face unlock because I like looking at my lock screen sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so I okay. I love just pressing my power button and seeing like a couple things I have so on my lock screen. There's a setting on the Pixel where I think I tried this and it was still annoying. Okay. Yeah, there's a setting on the Pixel where it will when it when you look at it, it will unlock your phone, but it won't automatically go to your home screen. You'll still see your notification. It is the most like minuscule thing I hate about it because sometimes I'm like, I want to look at that. And the other times when I want face unlock to work, I want it to be right into mm. the screen. Right. So if that makes sense, like with a fingerprint unlock, I can do that. I can just yeah. open it or I can just be straight into the... Well, it's nice that you can use both, right? Yeah. Yeah. So being able to like unlock it and see your notifications and then just you know tap Fair. is yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, that works. Overall though, yeah, I think it's like one of the best... Full. It's probably the best foldable available in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I like the aspect ratio more than the Z Fold five or six or yeah, whatever we're on we're right up now. To six now. Six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Final question: yeah. Which, when you plug it into a display, does it have anything similar to Dex? Answer: Yes, Us. it does. <laughs> Thanks to Michal Rahman, who's yeah. been reporting on this. But uh -huh. if you go into developer settings, turn it on. I played with it this morning as soon as David walked in. Yeah. It has a very rough. Uh, Dex like experience that you can force enable, and I did have to force quit and shut the whole thing down to yeah. close the app. <laughs> yeah. But it does work. And we should note that that was this is on Android 14, and Android 15 is officially available right now, but it, not yet for the Pixel Fold for some reason. Mm. Probably because people don't have it yet. Mm. It's available for the nine series, but not the Fold. So when 15 comes out, I think there there is an improved Dex experience, but I'm not totally 15 is sure. supposed to have Dex, right? I think that's so. That's like one yeah. of the big features of it. I like hope so. I mean, it's not called Dex. Yeah, it's I was just going to say. It's called whatever the hell yeah. Google's calling it. We can it. try it on a, on a 15 on a Pixel oh, I uh, 9. Too. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you for answering my question. Yeah, so me. Adam is definitely going to buy this thing. 100%. Yeah, I think a lot of people were pretty happy with it. So it has, I will say the wireless charging cable is in a weird spot. Um, you can't, it's not like f direct center. Mm -hmm. I've had to like move it down. So I think the okay. cable is a little bit lower and my car has been having trouble charging the phone. This is why So I can't wait for Qi 2 and why MagSafe, I still think is one of the best features that's been made yeah. for a smartphone yeah. in years. It is a bummer that this does not have Qi 2 and there's yeah. only like one or two phones out right now that have it. It's like a Motorola phone that no one's going to buy and some other phone that no yeah, one's going to Yeah, I do like that cases are starting to throw magnets in it because like this mm -hmm. D-Brand case I have has the magnet inside of it. And channel then I sponsor. just always know channel sponsor, even though they're yeah. not telling me to. But like it's one of the reasons why I picked this phone and stopped using my Zen phone because I couldn't. I hated the like and there was sticker no on the back. MagSafe case for it. No MagSafe case for that. There was a I bought like an adhesive magnet to put it on, but then I just didn't have. Anyways, MagSafe is incredible. Yeah, I can't wait for Chi Two on literally every single phone. They sent me a case with this, but it's like one of those silicone ones. Folding it's just weird and folding cases are cases weird. Are weird. They're two yeah. piece and they usually have adhesives on them and mm -hmm. stuff, and it's just very strange. I'm curious to see what Mark has thinks after using it for a week because he was saying yeah. this might convince him to like switch to a full. Really? Phone. Yeah. yeah. I mean. There are things about it that I'm like, I kind of would prefer the regular Pixel 9 for. Like, it does feel kind of weird to have, like, a two-piece phone in your pocket all the time. But it's thin enough that it's not, like, the bulkiness is not the problem. So, yeah. It's funny because, like, if you're used to a case, it's probably the size of a phone in a case. Mm -hmm. But if you're used to a case, you're probably going to want to put a case on it. And now yeah. it's going to be a phone in a case with a case. And I will say it was really nice on the plane on the way back because I was either able to put it in, like, tent mode yes. to watch a YouTube video like do this mm -hmm. or you could do this yeah which is really awesome so you can't even see that on camera but basically different forms of tent mode which is nice oh and then also you can have like a giant viewfinder when you're taking you can basically mm. be that ipad guy you know but with your foldable phone hell the yeah. giant viewfinder so i just also want to <laughs> yell really quickly at google for making the the porcelain one, the white one, which is the objectively better color. The Google Store Only exclusive. available from Google. Yeah. So annoying. Yeah. Sounds like they marketed that perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially it, since it's going to work, yeah. Yeah. Especially since they've been opening all these Google stores. But yeah, that's basically the Pixel Fold. So. Yeah. If anyone has any more questions, hit them in the comments. Yeah. After you like and subscribe. Yeah. You can also uh, post at me on Blue Sky Threads <laughs> or X. <laughs>
and I'll try to answer your questions. If yeah, but I, actually, ones. if people have questions, though, it'd be great because we're main channel is going to do this review so much later. Yeah. We have some extra ammo for what people might want to know outside of the general reviews if they even come like again i said again wednesday morning i've seen like three video reviews on yeah. this so. they will come it's just people got them so late yeah it sounds yeah. like google did a really bad job at rolling out this review program for the fold shocker does <laughs> yeah, big shocker so um all right next story uh, this is a small story but i found kind of funny it's mm. pretty niche but i think is an example of kind of like the dead internet that we've been talking about dead and how theory. yeah how ai is kind of ruining everything and you know essentially ai is going to create so much that ai is going to be pulling from pu like ai already and we're going to start losing out on actual writers so if you if anyone's familiar with james hoffman he is like the number one coffee youtuber um highly highly suggest his channel he's great besides but, coffeezilla besides coffee both similar content <laughs> both similar looking just kidding um <laughs> But on James Hoffman's subreddit, somebody just happened to l search James Hoffman in Google. And what came up was this like kind of strange photo as like, do you know, like the Google overviews will say like their age, it'll say like maybe where they went to school, a brief description of them and some links. And then usually a profile picture of who that person or thing is. The profile picture looked like James, but not really like James. And people were wondering what it was. And through a little bit of digging, they found they went back to this website from Anthony Basker, who has a bunch of essentially an entire website that feels like almost everything is AI written. In yeah. It. So it comes from this article about James Hoffman and being a coffee channel. And when I say article, I mean it just looks like he kept putting into an AI generator, like write why you should watch James Hoffman's channel. And then weirdly enough, all of the photos in it are like an AI generated version of James Hoffman. And they all look different. <laughs> they all look kind of the same. It's all like mm. similar hair color, glasses, um, like similar style, but Buddy. just off. Yeah. And I guess I don't really get why they're generating all of it. But then there's other articles about like Joe Rogan and about like this political mm. podcast. Every single piece of the website that I've seen so far is AI generated. It also says my personal review, which is funny because a lot of this writing looks AI generated too. I think all of the writing and at least those ones about like podcasts and shows that they like feels AI. But I just thought overall, this was like a perfect example now seeing that Google pulled information from this as the inter the like AI overview or you know the overview in general in Google search, yeah. pulling the profile picture of someone who is, there's no shortage of, content and photos of james hoffman right. he literally has a super popular youtube channel yep i don't know i thought this was kind of funny and my first like personal anecdotal evidence of like dead internet theory yeah yeah, yeah. totally this is like a direct like representation of what dinner dead internet theory is yeah. which so. for people that don't know it's basically this theory that most of the content that we're consuming on the internet now is created by robots. But yeah. Yeah, and this has been a theory for a while and and like even before a lot all of this AI stuff started to happen because way back in the day we were just having bot problems constantly. <laughs> exactly. And now the bots are getting much worse, but now we're in this new paradigm where we also have AI generated images and text. Yeah. Whoops. Yes. <laughs> and so Google specifically, because and because they're leaning into AI as well with these AI overviews and all this kind of stuff, now they're starting to pull their automated images are being pulled from these different sites, which now are AI generated images. Yeah, so, so AI is creating something for AI to take over. And at what point it's just an endless cycle of yeah garbage yeah and it's just going to be hard to find actual information or actual or new information yeah or yeah. new information right and then you know there's the thing with reddit where reddit can only be indexed by google now so if you search something something reddit on any other search engine it's only going to give you posts older than like um august 2024 or something not great um everything no surprise for reddit everything just down worse. Earth. So. downhill through and through that yeah. <laughs> dumbass website <laughs> Damn. steve huffman loser dang okay one more story that actually seems like it sort of broke while we were recording this okay mm. Il Ilya, um, that's cover yeah from OpenAI, announced this morning that he has raised one billion dollars for his new company 
Oh. And they're going to be building Safe Super Intelligence. In fact, the name of the company is Safe Super Intelligence, Inc. Uh, um, nope. And I don't uh, know how to feel about this, but the part that really stuck out to me is they're like, we're not doing products. We're just going to straight shot just to Super research. Intelligence. No product cycles. He literally says in the announcement, like, no product cycles. We're just going to straight shot. So, Ilya... Don't murder me with your weird robot. <laughs> I feel like this is calling it safe. What what is it again? Safe. Safe super intelligence. Okay. If you're calling anything like honest review, truthful <laughs> review, yeah. if you're like if you have to put the yeah. things that we all should expect from it in the title, <laughs> it's a red flag. Immediate red flag. Yeah. yeah. Like so yeah. calling this safe makes me think it is already the most unsafe also, version of it. A billion dollars. I'm which is like unfortunately not dollars, surprised by that. Which is like not even enough to train to like get up to speed with what everyone else is doing. Dude, yeah. I I need to walk into the A16Z offices like <laughs> high as <laughs> on drugs and just see how much money they'll give me. Cuz it seems like you can just say anything and they'll give I mean they're yeah. not the only funder in this round. Uh yeah. there's all the big guys are in this uh NF, NFDG and A16Z and Sequoia and the usual suspects. The yeah. usual billion dollar <laughs> givers. Safe super intelligence sounds very similar to how open AI was originally founded as a open nonprofit. Yeah. Well, non if it helps, safe super intelligence is for profit from the beginning. <laughs> so they're for profit and they're not selling anything. Why would you sell anything when you can just be handed a billion dollars? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I know how venture capital works. I know it's not free money, but a billion dollars? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Anyway. <laughs> Trivia, dude. Trivia. So, going on with the audio round that Ellis has, we have a clip. Which famous tech founder is this? And we were trying to compete, so when people signed up, they wouldn't see anything. That's boring. So, mm -hmm. I put myself as this person that could connect everyone else, so you'd see people right when you signed up. That was the idea. Who is that? That sounds like Christian Zelig. I don't. I don't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but he's not a founder. Famous. Tech I don't founder. think Apollo had <laughs> yeah. Reddit well, users a, right in front of you. A, a founder. What? Christian Zelig. What about him? He made Apollo. Yeah, no. Wait, oh. his last name is Zelig. 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 S e l i g. Yeah. We'll remove that. Okay, we'll play that again at after the, the break. At the break. Uh, at the end of the break. At the end of the podcast. Correct. Well, we're really, That's what I said. We're really struggling we with that Marquez, Marquez here. So <laughs> we need super alignment of this podcast. Does it have to be super safe? alignment? <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I mean, we'll be back. Support for Waveform comes from NetSuite. Every business would love to know what's coming next. Imagine if you had a super detailed list of what's going to happen with interest rates, stock prices, and inflation. Your day-to-day -day challenges would be a lot easier to tackle with perfect information. But today's rate of change means that certainty about tomorrow is hard to come by. That's why many businesses have gotten themselves future ready with NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the go-to business management suite for almost 40,000 companies, offering everything you need to stay on track, no matter what tomorrow brings. NetSuite combines accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more into one simple platform, offering a single source of truth. Get real-time insights and data you can use to make the right decisions faster than ever before. Don't get caught looking backwards. Get ahead of the curve and stay focused on what's coming next with NetSuite by Oracle. Speaking of opportunity, you can download the CFO's Guide to AI and Machine Learning at netsuite.com slash waveform. The guide is free to you at netsuite.com slash waveform. That's netsuite.com slash waveform. Support for Waveform comes from Shopify. When it comes to building a sustainable company, how you sell your product is just as important as what you're selling. Because even the most incredible garlic chopper or Bond villain sized aquarium tank won't reach customers if the buying process is complicated, buggy, or broken. Shopify offers a set it and forget it solution to sales that smart businesses are turning to every single day. Shopify is an all-in-one digital commerce platform that may help your business sell better 
than ever before. Their Shop Pay feature may convert more customers and end those abandoned shopping carts for good. There's a reason companies like Allbirds turn to Shopify to sell more products to more customers, whether they're online, in brick and mortar, or on social media. Businesses that sell more sell with Shopify. You can upgrade your business and get all the same checkout Allbirds uses with Shopify. You can sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash waveform. Just go to shopify.com slash waveform to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash waveform. Support for Waveform comes from AT&T. Here's a little secret. Most smartphone deals aren't that exciting. To be honest, they're barely worth mentioning. But then there's the best deals you can find at AT&T. Now those are exciting. They're the kind of deals that are worth talking about. Like their deal on the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6 featuring flex cam with Galaxy AI. Now sure, I could just say it's an amazing deal and hope you believe me. But with this one, it's worth sharing the details. You can trade in your eligible smartphone for a new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6. That's it. Simple. Any year, any condition, a deal this good will have you shouting from the rooftops. Or at the very least, calling your friends from your new phone to tell them about it. AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Requires trading of Galaxy S, Note, or Z-Series smartphone. Limited time offer. 256 gigabytes for $0. Terms and restrictions apply. See at.com slash Samsung or visit an AT&T store for details. All right, welcome back. I want to talk about a new game I've been playing. I would like to hear it. It's called Deadlock. If you're playing games, you've probably... Oh, shoot. Someone's on the phone? Again? No, no just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My default is like, David Paris is here again? Where is he? Um, <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> All right, back. Deadlock. If you've been playing games, you've probably heard about this. It has taken off as probably like one of the most popular games right now, but it took off in the weirdest way possible okay. from what I've seen. So Tell me about it. Like you said, a lot of people have not heard of it. The first time I heard of this game was from The Verge. They yeah. made an article about it the other day that I thought was just like not a great headline because it said it's... So it's a it's a Valve MOBA game. MOBA's multiplayer online battle arena. Mm -hmm. um, League of Legends, Dota. I mean, mm -hmm. Valve made Dota. They're yeah. um, super, Dota super 2. popular. Dota 2, yeah. Specific. Um, and then, so it's like a third-person shooter MOBA made by Valve. Um, so it's kind of a mix between a, a bunch of different games, but it's awesome. But The Verge made this article, and the reason it was interesting is because not a lot of people had heard about it because when you open the game, it's in a such an early stage of playtesting and invite-only right now that... Every time you open it, there's a pop-up that says, you are agreeing to not share anything about this game. Um, and there's a little checkbox and an okay. Mm. I guess The Verge said you could just hit escape and get past it and then decided uh -oh. we'll just make the article anyways. And then I believe he got banned uh -oh. for doing the article. And that weirdly created, from what I've seen, a ton of hype around the game. I know there are people <laughs> playing it already, but through that, People started wondering enough about it because they saw some gameplay footage from it. Mm. And it are, looks, are you about to get banned? I have no idea because now people are full blown streaming it. Like, okay. it's Did straight you hit escape? I, <laughs> I clicked OK. Allegedly. I, you I'm allegedly, not sharing gameplay footage. Allegedly. I allegedly okay. in Minecraft. I thought I in Minecraft. You hear that game? Um, we're fine. <laughs> I thought that they officially started allowing I you do to think share it's officially it allowed to be ago. shared. Yeah. Um, and. But through that, it created all this hype. I immediately was like, this game looks awesome. And then shout out Max Weinbach sent me an invite. And then you can send out, at that point, what I saw, unlimited invites. So I invited all of my friends that I play games oh. with. None of us were really playing Valorant anymore. So now this is 100% the game we play almost every single day. Dang. Um, it's really, really good. It's that good? It it's, got you off of Valorant? I haven't played Valorant for like six what? months. You're really? like the Valorant guy. Uh, Damn it, not there, anymore. What happened like six months ago that could have taken you off? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's for anyone that doesn't know, Andrew recently became a father. I have a kid, yeah. and they're, they take up a lot of time. Yeah, but well. now she has a really consistent 7 p.m. bedtime, which is perfect to like eat dinner, like hang out with Claire, and then 
nine thirty game time <laughs> for for probably a crisp ten thirty bedtime after that <laughs> to wake up in time. But um, yeah, it, it is it is really good. It is a lot. It's like TF two and Dodo put together. So like yeah, talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, it's third person shooter. You have a bunch of different characters with different abilities, but because it's a MOBA, there's lanes. There's actually four lanes in this, okay. and there's neutral creeps, towers, bases, similar to that. You know, you you generate an economy, buy different items, level up different skills. All of the characters so far are super fun. They there's definitely a lot of Dota related skills, but that's like League and Dota have a lot of characters that are super similar. Yeah. This is inevitably gonna have that. Sure. Um but it's just like you jump right in. They have a bunch of really cool mechanics like zip lines instead of teleports back and stuff like that. They have shops and neutral creeps and bosses and mm. like it's it's been really fun. And and is it PvP like it. or PvE? I mean it's a MOBA, so it's both, right? So okay. you have like the creeps that you're killing in lane to push forward into bases. There's different monsters that give buffs and stuff like that. But you're also six v six, um, four lanes. There's some kind of confusing things now on if you know MOBAs, usually you have like solo lanes or duo lanes. Mm-hmm. Usually those I'm are sorry, set I'm up. I'm not into gaming at all. Can you explain what a lane is? I don't PvP think it's is. worth explaining <laughs> All of that, okay. to be honest. If you know a MOBA, you know what it is. It's just like a style of how you play based on how many people are there and what the map looks like. Yeah. Um, is Overwatch a MOBA? No. That's just like a first person shooter. Okay. Is this a MOBA? But it's, but it's in MOBA? an arena with like hero characters. Sort of. Gen- MOBAs have like one map. Oh. And so like Fortnite that arena. <laughs> Doesn't I think MOBAs are one of the hardest game types to explain. Yeah. Would you agree? Is like, chess a MOBA? I'm gonna ask Gemini <laughs> what a MOBA is. Can you ask Gemini what a MOBA is? We'll it's, see if it lies. it's a really good mix between you're playing against things that are computers and also people, if that makes sense. And through that, playing against those things helps out how you fight the actual people as well. Actually, wait, let's use Gemini Live for this. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So fantasy football is a MOBA. <laughs> Hi. All right, let's start chatting whenever you're ready. Can you explain what a MOBA game is? A MOBA game is a type of online strategy game where two teams battle against each other. Think of it like tug of war, but instead of pulling so on a rope, tug of you're war is a MOBA. Through the enemy's defenses to destroy their base. Each team has a base, base on opposite sides of the map. Protecting your base and destroying the enemies is the main goal. So to Stratego that, is a, a MOBA. You character with special abilities and work together with your team to defeat them. I can hold it. Can I say yeah. Tug of War is actually a great way to describe it? That's kind of true because you're kind of pushing back and forth it's like, to try to get Think of, mm-hmm. okay, easiest way to describe it. There's a map. Right. There's bases that you start in on both sides and okay. there's ways to get to those bases through the middle that have defense. So and then you're pushing back and forth through the defenses to eventually get to the other person's base and kill that base. Yeah. So Halo One Blood Gulch is a MOBA. <laughs> is Splatoon a MOBA? <laughs> okay. I think we is mayonnaise a MOBA. <laughs> so generally, too, you there are like unique heroes with different skills, and you have different roles. So you'll have like a healer, and then you'll have like a tank, a support, a tank, a, yeah, a so damage. Dota has hard carry, and then mid, and then off lane, and then two supports. The, here's yeah. why I think you should try it. Okay. Because. What's fun, what was fun about Dota and League is like all of those roles have been super solidified. Whereas, like, since Deadlock's so new, people are still like, it's fun to get into a game now when a lot of people are new and learning it. And there aren't these like ultra defined roles where if you do yeah. one thing a little bit different in a build, all your teammates start flaming you. Cause yeah. like MOBAs have to be some of the most toxic games. Also. That's the, re- and what's interesting about Dota is that you can actually play support characters like carries sometimes and those builds can work, but people will flame you if you yeah. do that. Yeah. You sh- I think you should try this, but there is aim involved in it because it's oh. still your main, I'm your screwed. like auto attack or, you know, your default attack is always some sort of weapon essentially like gun that you're shooting okay versus just like right click and it auto attacks interesting and is it windows only right now probably just because it's valve and on steam i'm assuming but i'm not 100 sure valve makes all the games they make are available on every type of so it might be then but i don't know it's in alpha so it's super early on don't Um, they use um team fortress 2 models for the game there's some that look super similar i thought i saw some screenshots early on that looked like the hunter from team fortress 2 but now i don't think there are none that i know of Mm -hmm. um this is the way i'm describing how popular it is right now though 
So Shroud, one of the most popular streamers in the world, especially when you're talking about streamers who just play video games and are good at video games. Mm -hmm. He's been working on this game that he announced a couple months ago and just released yesterday. He's been playing Deadlock more than the game that he like basically helped build, which oh. also has a bunch of hype. But he was playing Deadlock and talking about how great it was, and somebody like on his team was saying like, "Oh, Spectre Divide, you know, seems so good, and I think it has more potential of being like a bigger game." And he was like, "Nah, this game rules." <laughs> <laughs> so dang, yeah. The interesting thing about this game too is because Valve does not make that many games. Like they, for people that don't know, Valve made Half Life and Half Life Two, which are arg arguably some of the most famous games in the world, and they really defined like the PC era of gaming mm -hmm. way back in the day. And they they are also the distributor of Steam, which is the biggest gaming marketplace in the world for PC and Mac and Linux. And so it's really, really insane when they actually develop a game. And pretty much every single time Valve has ever made a game, it's been really, really good because they are a private company. They have very few employees and they let people work on whatever they want basically until it's done. Uh, sorry, I want to issue a correction that I should have stepped in sooner because this me a few months ago but valve pretty much removed mac support for their entire catalog of what games i play dota on mac every day dota and csgo are the two they kept support from but portals one and two left for dead's one and two the whole half-life series tf2 all do they technically are still listed in steam as supporting macintosh but they're only playable on 32-bit macs uh, they patched all the games so that you wow. cannot run any of them on a 64-bit Mac. Even though you previously could, they decided to remove. Really? Yes. Uh, I know because my brother, shout out Mason, plays out. a lot of Valve games. And uh, we used to play together. And now we can't. Weird. Yes, thanks. thanks, Gabe. I was going to say, I'm sure Valve's put out a couple bad games. But if you want to talk about bangers, Team Fortress 2, Dota 2, Half-Life, Portal, Left 4 Dead, Day of Defeat, like... These are some of the biggest games ever made on PC. Yeah. yeah. So it's a big deal for them to put out. The one thing that kind of concerns me is that Valve sometimes also kind of acts like Google uh, in that they have put out a bunch of spinoffs of Dota in the past that have been really amazing and then they just stop supporting. So back in the day when Hearthstone was really popular, they made a version of Hearthstone, but for Dota. And it was way better and it was really cool and it was called Artifact. And uh, they basically released it and then didn't support it at all after that and then closed it down. They also did the same thing with um, Dota lets you have like custom game modes inside of Dota and people can build these custom game mm -hmm. modes, which is really funny and ironic because the original Dota is actually a custom game mode of Warcraft 3. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you can someone actually built Warcraft 3 inside of the Dota custom game mode just to bring it full circle, <laughs> which is I, very funny. But. They also they made this game called Auto Chess because someone had made this uh, auto chess game in Dota, which was basically like it's a it was a mixture of chess and yeah. using Dota characters, and it was very very cool and very interesting, and it got so popular on Twitch and it was so insanely popular that League of Legends made their own version of yeah, it, Team Fight Tactics, Team Fight Tactics, and then Valve decided to basically make their own official version called Auto Chess. Um, I think it was called Dota Auto Chess. And then they eventually close that down too. <laughs> I just want to say, David, killedbyvalve.com is available. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is they don't make that much. Google makes crazy amounts of stuff. Um, so anyway, it's a big deal that they're actually making something new. And I really, really hope that because it's so popular, it will continue to uh, be supported. <laughs> yeah, I just think like as much fun as I'm having playing it, the main thing I thought was so cool is just like, it was pretty well under wraps. Like there are people who've been playing this for months and that community I'm sure is like, like we've known about it forever, but I would say the general knowledge of it was pretty low key. Yeah. And then like it kind of got leaked and then a bunch of people got into it and then they're basically like, all right, we're open now. And yeah. it's, I think it's still considered in alpha, but they've had, they've had like a 200,000 peak player, Holy concurrent crap. peak player already. That's wild. Yeah, I if believe, you just yeah. go to the Deadlock page on Steam, like there's nowhere to like download or anything. It's just like coming eventually to be announced. Yeah, but if you know anyone that has a that has it already, as far as I know, invites are unlimited. I invited like 10 of my friends and they all got their invites within a couple hours. You didn't so. invite me. Can you give me a code before they're not unlimited I thought anymore? It, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't send you one. I'll yeah. send you one. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. The Waveform Gaming Podcast. 
That's what we're doing today. This whole section, I can't wait for people to yell at me and Ellis, but you know. Why? And yell at us. It's impossible to talk about games and not get yelled at because the the gaming atmosphere is so large that like yeah. you could be really well versed in one game and not know anything about another and then you're not a gamer anymore. And if you yell at us about the definition of a MOBA, blame Gemini. Wait, so Minesweeper is a MOBA? <laughs> <laughs> Trivia, dude. All right, first question. I like how they just started transitioning to trivia because they know neither of us are capable of doing that. <laughs> no. Speaking of trivia. No, <laughs> no, is... no, no, no. All right, so earlier this week, Ars Technica reported a scary sound coming from somewhere. It was not supposed to come from the sound... Dude, I started reading like a robot halfway through that. That is the so Ellis sound is, is the so Ellis bot says Ellis is secure. a mobile. This sounds like there's a reply all episode similar to this, a super tech support where this guy's like subletting a basement. And he's like, here's this walking up to him oh at God. night and it starts freaking him out. You should go watch it. But yeah, it's like doesn't say anything. It's very funny. Yikes. What do we got, remember. boys? The Boeing. Very different answers. Very different <laughs> answers. Uh, the Boeing Starliner. Yeah. That is correct. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, uh, what, did, what did you write, buddy? A microwave. <laughs> All right. Before we get into the, the thing. Yeah. Andrew. Okay. I saw another article, or it might have been on Reddit. It was this person, and every time they. they put time in their microwave it was playing like ham radio uh oh, like awesome. like truckers were like coming through and talking <laughs> through the person's microwave hold on wait that's epic <laughs> i love that that's so <laughs> so i don't <laughs> hold on wow so yes this sound was coming out of the cockpit of the boeing uh starliner spacecraft um which if i was in space may or may not be stuck in space and i heard this sound it's literally dead space i dude. would <laughs> um immediately pee my pants uh yeah. they think the most likely answer is on board spacecraft like this you have your radio system and then you have this big patching system so you can send electrical signals from all over the spaceship into the radio it's really easy for little feedback loops or bleeds and stuff to happen in those complicated situations mm -hmm. and it did not seem to be dangerous in any way but talk about a fright and is this the same ship that the astronauts are stuck on until 2025? Some people say they're stuck. So NASA d says that they wouldn't use that word um, <laughs> oh. right so I'll leave that up you know to the people this is the video I was talking about. <laughs> One TikTok coming up. Why is this not? Oh, it was. Oh, yeah, it is. Come on, it to me. Come on, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. <laughs> Imagine that playing while on your microwave this go. That's awesome. <laughs> um, if you are an electrical engineer, and watch this show. Can the waveguide in a microwave, even though it's guiding non-ionizing radiation, is that enough to actually move air enough to hear that? Is that what's going on? Like, is the waveguide acting as the transducer in this system? I understand system? nothing what you just said. What? I feel like that's fake. What I just said is fake? No, no. What? That video is fake? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Like, it might be fake. Because there's two separate things that I'm thinking of that make it real, right? The first mm -hmm. is that if you run audio signal like alternating current that is audio through a tesla coil the the ionized plasma that comes from the electricity going through the air can get sound to propagate through the air like like neither confirm nor deny like that. the lightning on a tesla coil can act as a speaker Okay. And then also microwaves have waveguides like they have these things in them that are supposed to take electrical energy and then send it through the air in specific shapes to hit your food. Are so protected? I mean, it's like all in a cage. this might sound really dumb, but don't microwaves just also have speakers on them to play the noises for the beeps and the 
boops? Not all the time. Like for beeps and boops, it's usually cheaper instead of having like a conical speaker and an amp. Um, like if you take apart a lot of alarm clocks that go beep, 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 uh, they won't have a speaker. They'll have what's effectively a piezo microphone wired in reverse. So like something that is designed to uh, receive electrical signals and oscillate. And they usually have that hooked up to like a piece of metal, but it's not like a speaker okay. in the way that we like would understand a speaker. And if you were to like play actual audio out of it, it would be pretty indiscernible. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, electrical engineers, hmm. let me know. Podcast at waveform.com. Can a waveguide make audio propagate through air? Yeah. Somebody is saying they think it's a, because in the video it says whenever they have to flip the breaker is when it does it. So they're saying it's like some like boot up sequence that's playing it. Whoa. I don't know. But anyways, just so I don't look like a total lunatic guessing microwave <laughs> when David gets the Boeing Star, whatever thing. I'm just addicted correct. to news, bro. I just read too to much. News. Second question. But quick update on the score first. Marquez still with a cool 16. <laughs> Andrew in the lead with 20. Dang. Whoa. David, after getting that question right, with 19. Ooh. Okay. Pulling up Big the rear. question. Big question. So, David, for the tie, which famous tech founder is oh. this? And we were trying to compete, so when people signed up, they wouldn't see anything. That's boring. So mm -hmm. I put myself as this person that could connect everyone else so you'd see people right when you signed up. That was the idea. Who could it be? Automatically follow someone on this platform. Mm -hmm. Famous. If Google optimize. Oh. Conversational Wait. actions. Follow. I feel like I know what the platform is. I just don't know what. The I don't know what the platform is. is. Google Assistant Snapshot. Who you automatically follow? Famous. VR one eighty creator. All right, flip them and read. Who do you got? I wrote in cursive. Okay. Um, I wrote Twitter, which is not. Oh, you wrote a platform also? Because I didn't. Yeah, know. I was gonna say, why'd you guys we write just, the platform? Because I just wanted to <laughs> make it feel like I had somewhat of an idea. That wasn't where Jack I was Dorsey's going. voice, but that was Sundar. Was it? <laughs> no, oh, I was. Sundar, well, but I was you're like, both wrong. Something. Andrew, you wrote Google Plus. That it wasn't Google Larry Plus. Page. Google Plus. Because Marquez used to always yeah. talk about how he thought he was like the default guy that got suggested on Google Plus, which is why that. he was the most followed. It was person. definitely him and Guy Kawasaki. They definitely were <laughs> that? the two. Guy Kawasaki is like a tech evangelist guy. Oh. The answer. And here is one of the men who founded it, Tom Anderson. How are you? Okay, I thought, thought they'd say his name in the full <laughs> clip. That's embarrassing. <laughs> it was. Uh, do you like to say it, Adam? You say it. It was the founder of MySpace. Oh, oh Tom. no. Tom. Context clues, Andrew. <laughs> we just talked about MySpace. Is he Canadian? And that makes no sense. This is a, How would I know that? Well, this is a clip from CBC, so... And Tom was like... Plus one for him being Canadian. I'm pretty sure Tom was number one on everyone's top eight automatically when you made a page. Wow. Cocky much? No, he's American. American cocky much? <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> I think that's it. Don't worry, Marcus well, will be here. Who are you to say when the podcast is over? <laughs> We're not done yet. Maybe I got more stuff I want to Do you need me to call Marquez? About. Do you want me to call him? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? We're wrapping up. Oh, We're trying as okay. hard as we can. Wait, can I shout out someone? Of course. Oh, someone, yeah. someone gave Marquez mm. a keychain in Australia oh, yeah. with a bunch of things that get said, and one of them was shut up, Ellis, so we know you watch the pod, and that was oh, we all got a big kick out of that. That yeah. was so... Cool. When I saw my yeah. name written on there, I was like, <laughs> printed on there. I was like, I really made it. It was like a three D printed keychain. It almost looked like a stamp. Yeah. But Can I shut up, Ellis. Yeah, that was so cool, man. Thanks for doing that. That was we, cool. We we like that. Also, thank you. I guess this is a weird thing to say. Thank you, but uh, the guy we mentioned last week on the pod. Oh, uh, Derek. Yeah. Yeah. Who, he apparently watched the whole time. That's awesome. Yeah. That was super cool. Yeah. I love his stuff. I don't even watch a lot of audio stuff on YouTube and. I like Derek. So cool. And David wanted to say something. Yeah. Can I also shout out something? Yeah. So, friend of the pod, uh, David Kogan, AKA The Unlocker, has finally opened his YouTube coffee shop yeah. in Brooklyn. It looks awesome. So, it's called Coffee Check. He is going to be selling his own beans eventually, not yet. But if you are in Greenpoint in Brooklyn, it's 65A Gre uh, Green Street in Greenpoint. And it's I was literally really drinking awesome. it like this whole episode. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah. What makes it a YouTube coffee shop? Half of it is a coffee shop. Half of it is a YouTube studio. 
Whoa. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, cool. With like a really awesome like sound booth and huh. lights and all that kind of stuff. Cool. Yeah. While we're shouting people out, can I shout someone out? Sure. Shout out to you, listener, for sticking through this entire <laughs> episode. <laughs> hey, they're washing the dishes. It's fine. They have nothing else they can be doing with their ears, <laughs> except wiggling them or something. You know. Andrew, take us out. I forgot what. David, you... take us out. Thanks for listening to Waveform Podcast episode number something. We've been your hosts while Marquez is uh, in Upside Down World. And Waveform is produced by Vox Media. No, no. it's not. <laughs> Jeez. Waveform is produced by Adam Lillian and Ellis Roven. We are part of the Vox Media Podcast Network. And our intro outro music is by Vane Sill. See you next week. at the end we can say if you hated this episode next week is going to be apple <laughs> so come back please